Hi, Adriana. Hi, Will. Can you hear the music? Let me know if you can. It's true, they do have ravens at the zoo. We could do that. <laughs> yes, I wore my pug shirt on purpose. I'm sure Hank will come in at some point. So I thought I could wear my pug shirt today. Hi, Chris and Joshua. Hi, Haley and Maddie. Well, when you get on early, you can get a shout out because I'll stop reading once I start. Oh, salamander. I like that idea, Caitlin. This is my Zen Garden Radio. I play this at school all the time. Some kids say it's boring. Some kids say it's depressing, but I think it's relaxing. It's good art music. Except during the holiday season when I play my seasonal jazz. I do not play Christmas music. I play seasonal jazz. Hi, Colin and Lizzie, my niece and nephew. Sonia, uh, a tiger is on the list. It's just not today, but it is has been requested and I've already put it in for later this week. Hi, Sophia and Tom. Hi, Bombers. Yeah, this shirt looks just like Hank. Looks like he's here. I'm sure he'll come in and visit at some point. Um, somebody also requested a meerkat that is also on my list for later this week. Hi, Beneshev, it's family. <laughs> Mrs. Wheatley, I need to see your drawings. You just need a pencil and paper today. And then of course, coloring materials later when we're off, when I'm offline. Just pencil and paper. The paras have a lot. Uh, we're definitely doing a turtle. Oh, a seal is a good one. Coming in fast now, I can't keep up. 
Well, welcome everyone. Like I've done the past few days, I'll wait till about 10.02, 10.03 to get started, but I do have my nice relaxing Zen garden music, so it's not, we're not sitting in silence, so you can get in a drawing frame of mind. I believe, maybe it was Maverick who said it was depressing. Somebody, somebody in fourth grade said it was depressing. I think it's relaxing. Oh, a dolphin is on the list for next week. This week we'll be finishing up our zoo. Next week we're moving on to aquarium. So looking for those uh, sea animals or other things that you can find at the aquarium, like the dolphin, turtle, seal. Somebody just said a shark for sure. So that was requested. Line is on the list for later this week. Need to do a line because we're the Lisbon Lions. And also my husband coaches at Howard High School and they're the Lions. So we've got to do a line. Ooh, a parrot, I like that. Parrots could be at the aquarium because they are in the tropical rainforest at the top. So we're running out of um zoo space oh no years ago, I made a deal. again sorry i have action or hold on just turning it down i have the ad i don't pay for a pandora so we have to deal with some ads Hi, Dax. I just saw you pop up. Oh, yes. Jelly jellyfish. I love the jellyfish. Stop my life. Sorry. Back on. Okay. I gotta stop clicking through stuff. Yes, it's on the left. I think we'll go might be tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my beautiful music. So since we have more new friends starting, I'm just going to do a brief recap about myself. Sorry if this is repeats for somebody, but I just want to know. We're all in the same. So um, my name is Miss Gyro or Rebecca, um, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> and I'm an art teacher at Lisbon Elementary in Howard um, I live in the city, and I have three boys that are I think all still sleeping. They are not participating right now. I also used to work at Ilchester and Thunder Hill. Friends who are on here this morning. I also have a painting business, um, Gyro Creative. If anybody wants to check that out, I do paintings or sign painting for people, and also do paint parties and birthday parties. So just 
throwing that out there on Facebook and Instagram. Um, <clears throat> and the reason we are doing a zoo project is I used to work at the Maryland Zoo back when it was called the Baltimore Zoo. And I love zoos and animals and their environments. And they love to do food art. Um, I do the food art all the time. Each grade usually does some food art. So we're doing our zoo animals this week. We have already done iguana, giraffe, and hippo on Monday. Uh, yesterday we did a monkey, a sloth, and penguin. If you missed those, um, you still watch those. They're still up. The videos are still up on my page. Um, the, own, the one from yesterday is public. Today's video is public. I didn't do it public on the first day because I didn't really know what I was doing. So um, you have to be my friend to see um, Monday's video. So today we're going to be adding to our zoo. If you haven't started already, basically what I had everyone do is draw a circle on their paper. I don't want to see the <laughs> um, to create their logo for their zoo in the middle, and then create different um, spaces around for our different animal enclosures. And you can make it all fit on one paper. You can make it lots of different papers. You can make a little booklet, a zoo um, booklet. As people walk into your zoo, you can hand them a booklet so they can see all the animals. And I'm going to be giving you facts about the animals, just a little bit of information, mainly so you know what to include in their environment, in their enclosure. You need to give them the space they like and what they're used to in the wild and um, the food they need to eat. So that's very important. And if they should be with other um, groups of their animal as well. Um, so today we are going to be starting with a highly requested animal, and that's the elephant. Shout out to Cooper. He was the first one to read it's his favorite animal. So I want to make sure we got that in today. Um, an elephant is a mammal, and it's the largest existing land animal um, that is still alive. And they can get up to 11 feet tall. And three species of Elephants. There's two African and one Asian. And African elephants tend to have the bigger, more floppy ears, and Asian elephants are a bit smaller. Now, at the Baltimore Zoo, where I worked, um, we had African elephants, and they're in the African part of the zoo. The last time I was there, which was about a year ago, with my son's first field trip. This, uh, the elephant enclosure was closed for renovation. So I'm thinking it's probably open now with lots of new cool things for them to walk around in and play with and um, have some fun. Elephants do like to play. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever been to around Halloween. We do a pumpkin smash and throw and smash pumpkins and stomp on pumpkins and stuff. And lots of fun. I think I mentioned the first day when we're talking about hippos, how they can be very dangerous and being a hippo keeper and an elephant keeper are one of the most dangerous jobs when it comes to working with animals. Um, and I did get to, when I worked there, I got to go into the elephant enclosure and feed an elephant. Now they were in the inside um, place, so they were behind bars, so they were going to trample me. But I did get to feed them, which was pretty exciting. It's kind of, they have their long trunks that we all know, and they are for breathing and eating food and drinking. So they suck up the water and they bring the food to the mouth and also, also for insects. And so that's how they play. They can you know, pick up objects with them and have some fun um, when they're in captivity. And I guess it's a wild too. And they can live up to 70 years in the wild. So they live a very long time. And they eat leaves, twigs, fruit, bark, and nuts. You need to make sure you include all those in your enclosure and definitely some sort of um, way to get water, water feature. I know the one at the zoo used to have like a little water area, like makeshift pond lake thing. Um, so they could cool off, like they suck up the water and throw it onto their back to cool off. Same with hay, they do that um, to cool off for any itchiness that they might have. Oh, well, that's a good fact. Elephants are the only mammal that can't jump. Interesting. Did not know that. Didn't ha have that on my list. So thank you. Now I learned something today on this homeschooling. Okay, so let's start with elephants. So like I have always done, I have my paper here. I'm going to be using a drawing pen so you can see it because you can't see pencil on my paper. Um, and I'll let you know if there's that you need to erase 
be able to erase my drawing pen. Okay, going down. So we're gonna start with the elephant's face, and that's just a more rounded oval. Not quite, not too ovally, but not too circly. And we're gonna give him some eyes, just circles. And let's go ahead and fill in those pupils too. A little second grader coming up behind me. Oh, he ran away. I thought he was gonna come be on the video. Son Sam. Okay, back to the drawing. And then we're gonna add the ears. And of course, you know, elephants have very big ears. And the one I'm drawing, I'm just gonna do large ovals, but if you wanna give them some shape, you can. I'm gonna just draw large ovals here. And here. Now we're going to give them a trunk, and this is the first part where you're going to need to erase that I want not to erase. So you can make the trunk as long as you want. And it comes from like right below the eyes, go straight down, and sort of give it a curved line at the end. You don't want them to be look like you got a chopped off trunk. Now you're going to want to erase this line. All right, and now we're gonna add the body. The body's another oval that's gonna come off side, just to the side of the trunk, and up into the ear. We're gonna give him some feet. This is another time you wanna erase, so the feet will come off the body like this. You want to probably erase these two lines. You don't have to, you could probably keep those. One of the things I always do when I draw an elephant is give them those sort of those toes that they look like they have. I just do little bumps like this. And he needs a tail. And there's your elephant. I think you need to smile too. When you draw your elephant in your enclosure, you can color him however you want. On mine, I drew two elephants and I made one, one sort of a navy blue and one more of a light blue. Because why not, right? It's our zoo, doesn't really have to be realistic. These are more cartoony drawings that we're doing, so we might as well um, decide how we want our animals to look in our zoo that we're creating. Okay, so the next one that we've been waiting for, some of us, is the panda. A lot of requests for a panda, and as you know, the pandas are not at the or the Maryland Zoo, but they are at the National Zoo, and they are there through the end of this year. From the research I did, I could be wrong. I know there was something earlier this year where they were being sent back early, so I assume they're still there through the end of the year because they're on a 10-year loan from China, so they will be going back at the end of 2020. And 99% of Panda's diet is... Um, Bamboo. Now I just saw somebody ask about tusks. If you want to add tusks, you can. Um, I didn't have them on my drawing that I just wanted, so, but if you want to give them tusks, sure you can. I think I was making mine more babies, young elephants. Um, so go ahead and do that if you want to. Okay, so back to Panda. 99% um, of their diet is bamboo, so you want to definitely include um, Bamboo in their enclosure. Sorry, somebody's asking me about that. So you have to have lots of bamboo in their enclosure. And zoos 
they are given more um, a variety of foods to enjoy. So they're given honey and eggs and fish and yams and leaves, oranges and bananas. So you can include those in your enclosure as well because it is a zoo and it's not in the wild. You definitely want to include the bamboo. And the pandas are about four to six feet tall and weighing in about 350 pounds. They're rather large animals. And in the wild, they live about 20 years. And in um, captivity, they live about 30 years. So they do very well in captivity, generally. All right, so I'm going to move this in and we will start with our panda. Okay. So with our panda, we're going to start with a circle. We're going to eyes where the, the actual eyes are going to be, but we're going to draw something around it as well. Might run out of room with this. Yeah. I'll do that again. I don't want to run out of room. Okay, so we have the panda and his eyes. And then we're going to add the ears. <laughs> and then what pandas are known for is the black um, sort of patches around their eyes. So you want to go ahead and draw those in as well. And then let's go ahead and add the rest of his face. Let's add the pupils. And the nose. Let's give him a little side smile. And when we're coloring these in, there are certain parts that you're going to want to be black or dark, um, a dark color. Like I said, we've talked about, you can make your animals whatever colors you want. Um, and in my case, I'm just going to sort of color in gently with my pen where those dark colors should be. Um, and then when you see my final at the end, you'll see how I colored it in. I see a lot of asking about it. Yes, Flamingo is on my list for tomorrow. So definitely doing a flamingo tomorrow. All right, so now we're going to add to the arms that come down in the front. I see somebody ask about red panda. Um, the reason that giant, or these pandas are called giant pandas is to distinguish them from red pandas. And if you've ever seen a red panda, it looks more like a raccoon than um, a giant panda, but that, they are really, but that's the distinguishing name, red panda and giant panda. Okay, so now we're gonna add the body. And the body's gonna come by the head and come in this way. Now we're going to add the legs. This is another time when you're going to want to erase. But you're going to add um, the two back legs, one off the back and one underneath the body. And give him a little tail. Now, when you're coloring, I'm going to show you the spots that you're going to want to make darker 
I would make it black or blue or red. I do pink. I like to see a pink panda. We definitely want to color around the eyes. Ears. His forearms here, his chest. That's a little bit sketchy, just to get the idea of what you want to color in. So I can actually show you my final panda here. So what I like about this is that oops, I outlined in black and then I colored in with the same black. I didn't use as much pressure so you can still see the outlines and the distinction in his pupils. It's not all blended in. You can see I gave him some fruit, lots of bamboo. Some of the comments are funny. Um, okay. We got on Panda. I see Hank. You want to give him to me? No, I'm not going to. Here he is. He's been sitting there staring at me. Say hi. Hanky. <laughs> okay. Okay, we got to do our last one. Okay, and then our last one that we're going to do today is the koala. Uh, now, as far as I know or remember, Colton did hear Sam. Sam was in the background. He's the one that handed me. As far as I can remember, the zoo does not have a koala. Um, and a lot of times people call them koala bears. They're actually not bears. Uh, I think it's just they have that. Them. So people call them koala bears, but they're actually a marsupial. And if you know what a marsupial is, the most one that you may know more about is the kangaroo. So it's related to the kangaroo. And it's also from Australia. And they're very small. They're less than three feet tall, about 20 to 30 pounds. And they eat eucalyptus. So they hang out in the eucalyptus trees and then they eat leaves. And they're very lazy. I didn't realize this either. They're lazy and sleep about 20 hours a day. And when the mothers have the babies, they have them before they're fully developed. And then they go in their pouches, which is a, tra a trait of a marsupial. They, and they finish growing in the pouches for six to seven more months. And a baby koala is called a joey. And actually, that's what baby kangaroos are called as well. So I didn't realize that the, um, they're both called joeys, they're babies. So we are going to do koala. And like I said, um, it eats eucalyptus leaves and hangs on the trees. So that's really important that you have in your zoo. Right. Sorry, Sam moved my zoo drawing. Um, so I have my koala hanging out in a tree with the eucalyptus leaves all around him. He doesn't have to go too far to eat. We just found out or learned very lazy and sleep 20 hours a day. So they're not going to go too far to find their food. Okay. So here we go with koala. So the koala's head is sort of a triangular shape, but a soft triangle, so not a hard triangle. So rounded on the top, so the rounded triangle. I see a lot of people saying cow. Um, so maybe, you know what? If we have more weeks off, maybe a third week we could do uh, a farm. So we'll do aquarium next week and we can do a farm. I 
Africa if we're still home. Um, that would be fun. And we can maybe, maybe it can include Hank on the farm, pugs on the farm. You know, they're great animal herders. Just kidding, they're not. Okay, so we're gonna draw his eyes. He starts like a ghost. If anybody, all any parents out there remember the um, the fry guys or the fry girls that McDonald's used to have. <laughs> and then his nose is sort of circular but rounded, um, but not quite as wide as his head. And then we're going to give him a little smile. And then his pupils. Now their ears are very fluffy. Um, when you start using color, you could probably add more texture of fur lines. But for now, we just want to sort of make them um, just with use a wavy line with it. And inside. But you can add more of a, um, of a fluff to it when you add your texture, right? I mean, when you use your colors. Let's give him a little eyebrow, too. Okay, <clears throat> so this is another one that we're going to erase as we go. But first, we're going to make an oval body that kind of goes off to the side. So we're going to make him in a tree. We are going to do a flamingo. I see that. We're going to do a flamingo tomorrow. And then we're going to add an arm that comes out here. You want to erase this line. And then the bottom leg. And erase that line. And then we're going to put him right in a tree. So now he's a little koala attached to a tree. And I'm going to put. I'm going to write narwhal down for the aquarium. I saw that a couple of times. <laughs> no more school. Oh, let's hope not. Okay. So here's our koala. Again, you want to erase those lines and really add some texture when you're doing, especially if you're using colored pencils. That's a great way to add some texture, give him some more fluff uh, than he already has. Um. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to show you my the zoo so far. My first page is all filled up. So from our past days, the iguana, giraffe, hippo, chip from yesterday, sloth, my Easter egg penguin, and then of course my koala over here. Could probably give him a little bit more texture. He looks a little bare. Oh, I like seahorse. I'm gonna write that down. Um, and then my elephants here. Two buddies hanging out, getting ready to smash some pumpkins. Hey, smashing pumpkins. I didn't even think about that. Um, and a little toy here so they can play with this ball, knock it around. And then I needed to do my second page. So I made my logo again because, oh, I should also say, before I worked at the zoo, I worked at Baltimore Magazine as a graphic designer. And we do a lot of logos there, a lot of branding. So if you have a brand you want to keep your brand consistent so my logos are consistent so everybody can see the brand okay so here's my panda hanging out getting ready to eat his fruit and his so i'll continue to look through these suggestions you have um and add them we have two more days of zoo i'm gonna add if you made your um, map like mine and you have a total of six spaces, I think we're going to have to add 
either do four animals tomorrow or four Friday, just so we have all the space. Um, and then next week we'll the same thing. We're gonna also do like a little map and enclosures. Maybe I'll change it up a little bit. Um, then we'll do uh, a farm following week. I don't know how to have a map, but I mean, let me think on that. How we can do that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been so much fun. I think it was today. I didn't know how much I would miss teaching, and it's nice to have a place to teach every morning at the same time. And do my hair and put on makeup and wear cute clothes. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Join me back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. and we'll do three, maybe four animals of all the ones that have been uh, requested. And have a wonderful day. Bye.